We're on uh, Facebook Live. I'm Renee Marie. This is Renee Marie Stoke of Luck Internet TV Show. And we're so happy and honored to have the privilege to really have this platform. I say it all the time, but it really is a, a privilege to be connected to the entire world um, at, at, at an instant. It just it blows me away that we're touching the entire world, that Germany could be watching or Italy could be watching or or um, France, or Spain, or, or, or Michigan, or wherever we are, it's, it's, it's pretty it's incredible. So, you know, a few weeks ago, um, a gentleman named DeMont, um, DeMont, yes, that's how you say his name, I want to make sure I say it correctly, had connected with me on Facebook, and um, he was a part of the American Stroke Association, and we both were traveling down to Washington, D.C., and he was so excited, and I hope you're watching, DeMont. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday with your family. I saw you on Facebook um, celebrating with your family. Um, he had really um, kind of connected with me and said, we, we have to do something today, uh, Renee. We both suffer strokes. We have to have a phone chain. We have to do something. And, and um, he is the one that actually introduced me, reintroduced me to Valerie because Valerie um, also suffered a stroke. She actually, let's take this out of here, but she actually um, wrote a book and actually did it on audio just recently and um, it's called Valerie Giglio? Uh, that Giglio. That's G my Gig yeah. How do you say it? Uh, Valerie Giglio. Giglio. Yes. Gilio, with, Gilio. An, with an accent. Gilio. Gilio. Yes. Gilio. Okay. So she actually wrote a book and she uh, did a CD calling Singing in My Own Key, which is an awesome name because she was a vocalist as well and was having a wonderful career until she suffered a stroke as well. So DeMont actually um, was connected to Valerie and Valerie... Um, said, I know Renee, she's also a Grammy member. We're connected because we're both Grammy members. She's like, oh my God. So she actually sent me like this quick text and um, and we've been connected ever since. Now, the reason she's live and not, she lives in Boston is because she's actually singing at the Bitter Sweet tomorrow. The, the Bitter, bitter End. Bitter with, End With the tomorrow. Indie Collaborative. And yes. So we'll get into that in a little bit, but I wanted to share with you the connection and how we all connected and and really how important we want to just make it how strokes can change your life in two seconds flat and how you really need to be aware of the signs of strokes. So we'll get into that a little bit later um, and we're also going to introduce to you Miguel. Is yes, that how you say Michele, your name? Michele. Michele. Yeah, all Mi my foreign friends call me Mike, but you, yeah, my, my name I like is Michele. Michele, yeah. Michele, yeah. I like that, because I'm a half Italian. And oh, really? Yes, I'm half Italian, half Cuban, so uh, oh, it, it, it's, wow. yes, yes. So Michele is actually studying at Berkeley School yeah. at the Grammys, at, at the Grammy... Um, no, um, um, Michele is a, is yes, a student a member, member of the, the Grammys. The Grammys, okay, right. student yes. member of the Grammys. Yes. So somehow, on this platform, on a Sunday evening in August, we all connected and came together, and we're so honored and privileged. So we're going to start off with Valerie really telling us a little bit about her, her, prior, her, her prior to her stroke, like what was happening in her life and where was she going in on this fast road and all of a sudden she got stopped by a stroke. So tell us a yes. little bit. Yes, sure. Uh, in 2014, I was uh, a, a singer and an attorney. Uh, well, I am still a singer and attorney, but I was just at the, I guess at a, at a wonderful time in my career. Uh, I, I was uh, going to uh, Berkeley College of Music Umbria Jazz Clinics in Perugia, Italy. I was just getting ready to return for that when I turned my neck the wrong way one morning and um, it just uh, broke both arteries in my neck which gave me a stroke um, a few days later. So I woke up unable to move my left side completely and seeing double and very very dizzy and um, I went to the hospital and I was diagnosed with a stroke. And um, I also were you in America or were you in Italy? No, I was in America. I was just America. getting ready okay. to uh, getting ready to go in, in a few weeks from that point. Wow! So I um, also lost my singing voice and my ability to sing, which um, are two different things. It's it's not just okay. You lose your voice like you have laryngitis and it comes back the next week or something. I actually lost 
my um, my voice, singing voice, as well as is the ability to sing, the, the, I know. the pitch, the tone, I know. anything like that. I couldn't sing for two years after my wow. stroke. Wow, yes. yes. It's so devastating because we sing, we speak mm -hmm. through music. Yes. So just imagine not being able to speak. Although, exactly. did you suffer from aphasia as well? No. 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 Okay. Luckily, yes. So you just suffered from not being able to have the tone or the... You know what I think that is? And, and I only know this mm -hmm. because... Um, one of our board members, Bobby Baby Walker, mm -hmm. from my foundation, he is actually suffering a stroke right now. He suffered two strokes uh, recently, mm -hmm. and he's back in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the muscle control and the, and, the, and the air passages that you can't it's control. Exactly. That. What yes. It is. Yes, I um, was in vocal rehabilitation extensively, and they had to reprogram my breath and, and so forth. But... Um, yeah, I also had no zero stamina. So at first, I could barely even speak as far as I would get so out of breath and, and very tired. I would almost pass out just by speaking to you for just a, yeah. a few minutes. Yeah. And so um, I had to build that up as well. And I was in rehab for, I was in inpatient for approximately two months and then wow. outpatient for a year. Wow. And I had to relearn how to walk, how to use my left side, and how to sing again. And I did this all in a year and then I was back to performing. My voice was not, I had 100%, but I was still back to performing. And I um, actually used, um, I with my therapies, I had uh, lots of different um, assistive devices. Mm -hmm. I actually have one device for my arm and that really helped me a lot. It was, what type of device it's was It's called that? the Bionis. It's called Bionis. It I think I had that. Yes, it's, it's wonderful. It kind of like straight, because I still can't straighten my arm out, mm -hmm. but it kind of straightens your, does it straighten your arm out? Well, what it is electrical stimulation and it clamps on to your arm and the pulses, so you use it for you build up every every evening, you use oh, it for wow. more, and then when you take the unit off, it, you're free for maybe a few few minutes, and then it goes back, it reverts back, but then the wow. more you use it, the freer the arm becomes, and it really worked wonders for me. Wow. Among other things, obviously, I, I was at Spalding Rehab in, in Boston, and they're just amazing. I, I can't say enough about all the, all the therapies. Yeah. In Mass General Hospital, the vocal... Uh, the Voice Center, they really helped me out so much. My vocal coach, uh, Vicki Vox, The Real School of Music. I have so many people that just contributed you're, you're to me. Yes, um, you're grateful for because it, yes. you, you need, you, we believe you need mm -hmm. to surround yourself with love and just the purity of, um, of recovery, you know, yes. and not have to worry about... Um, life you have to really mm -hmm. focus on recovering and that oh, that's is what it is that is so important because i was not i refused to be paralyzed or i refused to be unable to sing i, I mean i couldn't even imagine that as i had uh, made cds i had as you know we became members of the grammys i everything was um moving swimmingly as far yes. as my musical career and i just could not believe at such a young age that this would happen to me how just old were you again i'm 42 years old. 42 yes i was 26 mm -hmm. wow well, yes so that's even the, the but i'm just so but really. i think that's our concept our uh, one of the purposes of what we do is to let people know that it can happen to anybody yes at any time yes and and and, and 80 percent of strokes can be prevented yes um if you live a healthy lifestyle. If mm -hmm. you watch your diabetes, if you watch your high blood pressure, if you, you know, you control all that. Mm -hmm. But there are times where it just happens, you know, yes. and that happens in both our cases. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but but uh, when I was having my stroke, there was an eleven-year-old boy in town that suffered a stroke wow. as well. So That's it it, it really is important to know the signs and know the fast mm -hmm. um, where it's the, if the face droops, if the arms aren't you know one goes down, which I can't put my arm out. Um, and uh, what is it? F A S the smile yes. or the speech mm -hmm. and the time. Yes. That's really really important. That's really important. So when it when it happened to you. Like, this is what I always try to make people to, like, compassion is, how did it feel? Well, it was very, very, it was strange and surreal. I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what was happening to me. You know, I, here I am walking around normally, and then all of a sudden, I'm not. I, you're just, for no reason. I'm just because yeah. I look the wrong way. It's just bizarre. I, I just couldn't get Did they ever find thing. out what it is that you, 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 did you block something? Well, I, I actually I broke the arteries that that led to my brain by turning my neck too quickly. 
and nothing there's nothing wrong with me. I've had every test conceivable. I just just there was it. there was no vertebral, reason. For I had you. a vertebral artery dissection on each side of my neck. Mm. And that's what caused it. it caused the blood clot, and the blood clot traveled to its nearest neighbor, which was my brainstem. Mm. And um, and with the brainstem stroke, I mean, for for me, I mean, it was it was mostly all physical. I mean, really, I just had physical deficits, which were, you know, obviously I was in a wheelchair and it was pretty severe. But I still had um, the cognitive, you know, uh, abilities. I didn't have any problems communicate communicating. Right. 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 That's that's just um, you're a miracle Thank that you. that you ate. Thank you. But don't you think? No, but you don't you think? But mm -hmm. don't you believe that you have to have the drive and the will? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I I, I like I said a few moments ago. I refuse to allow this to take over my life. I mean, I, I was not going to be relegated to a nursing home facility at the age yes. of 42. And I wasn't going to give up everything that I had worked for just to let it vanish into thin air. I, I, I couldn't conceive of it. I just I just wanted to be normal again. That's all yeah. I said. You know, yeah. I so how did you, I mean, what, and I pretty yes. much, okay, I mean, I this, this is just a great, song like a great like a great oh, title to a you. book mm -hmm. because you know you are singing your own key now yes and but I believe that when people sing from the heart mm -hmm. they just sing from a different venue yes that's what it's true that's why that's what I wanted to convey with that title um, I think that you know for me I, I started to write that book when I was in the hospital and I could only use one hand and then as I got both hands back I was typing away and I published that, that was published last year in 2016, wow. and then I just did the audio version that came out in August, and I narrated it myself, which yes. I'm very proud of, because as I was saying, at first I could barely speak for more than, you know, moments at a time, and now I've done a seven-hour audio book over the space of several months. That's awesome. And that's on Audible, and that's Amazon, Barnes & Noble, I've really had a lot of success with it, and I'm very, very grateful. So... Miguel, how do you, like, were you in Valerie's life when she had her stroke? Oh, no, actually, I met her after the stroke in at the Umbria Jazz in 2016, yeah. And it was very surprising for me because, um, who, you know, that had a stroke, and basically, Valerie was the first person I met uh, that, um, you know, she's very um, amazing, is very fine despite the stroke, now she's completely fine. And I was very surprised in how she recovered and also about, you know, her strength, about the, the will that she has, uh, you know, all the, all the things where she aimed at, you know, the music and all, this, all the stuff that she does. And basically, you know, I was very surprised. She invited me to play at Mumbai Jazz. It been, we were, you know, doing the clinics, as she said before. And um, well, I would invite you to the jam. Yeah, yeah the jam she, she the, invited yeah. me. Yeah, she invited me. I, I mean, I was um, to, to the jam to play. We we played Johnny Be Good and then uh, another song from Steve Ray Vaughan. And it was very fun because, uh, yeah, it, w it was quite fun because. Um, so the jam was the first uh, the, the performance first you got. The first meeting. Uh, did you, you guys? Know, we we met. Well, I think we met the day of the jam, right? And we yeah, just decided yeah, we, to do we, we it. We, we met the day. Yeah, we met the day of the jam, and. Uh, and where is the jam? Uh, it, well, it was at Umbria Jazz. It was like um, the. They they have it. it the, it's a two week. Um, program with Berkeley College of Music and they have jams for the students um, every night of the weekend. Oh, it's wow. very, very, um, how would you say, it's relaxed. Anybody can, can do it if they'd like to. Yeah, yeah it's very, um, I mean, it's um, Umbia Jazz in my opinion, it's wonderful. Yes. It's something that uh, I definitely suggest to a musician to try uh, this mm -hmm. kind of experience because you are completely involved in music 24 hours and... Um, That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's very beautiful. You have to be immersed in what you want to become. Exactly. You have to surround yourself with who you want to become and who you idolize and people that are above you to kind of pull you up and educate you. And it really just, it's wonderful to jam with, with uh, individuals, other musicians. Yeah, it's something, you know, kind of, uh, you, you can share your experience with others. And music, uh, I think that it's a wonderful 
um, I can say it's a good uh, point, uh, a good tool to put people together. Mm -hmm. right. and, and another thing I want to say is that when I went, met Michele, um, he was just very inspirational to me because, you know, um, he is, is blind since the age of 18 wow. and he's just uh, phenomenal and he lives a, a, a completely normal life. And I looked at that and I said, my gosh, you know, I could you know, do, do the same thing. I could achieve a success as well. And then I learned that he was accepted to Berkeley College of Music in Boston and that's where I live. Wow. And, um, yeah. and then, you know, he was going to be moving to Boston. So we definitely connected right away and we are very close friends. Wow. So. Yeah, it was very, you know, a very strange coincidence and uh, at the same time I felt lucky because I said wow so I'm getting to Boston and you know anyone before and I met her and it was um, you know kind of um, when you already know someone before getting a new place mm -hmm. it's always good you know it's always nice it's 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 uh, do you think it was um, a divine intervention to bring you guys together oh well I don't know I feel um, you know, I, I believe uh, in myself, uh, I'm a, um, I, I believe, but, you know, m maybe, <laughs> perhaps. Can be. I don't think anything happens in life without reason. Yes. You know, it really is important for you both have connected at this point in, um, in both your lives, because you're going to help yourself yeah, both get to the next level. Yeah, you know, one thing that I always say to everyone is that, um, as Valerie told you before, I have been blind since I was 18 years old. And before I was completely sighted, you know, I could see perfectly. And um, after this, uh, for sure, is um, you know, it, it's um, I would say a devastating transition. The beginning, because if you can see and then you cannot see anymore, it's not easy at the beginning. But then you can always, um, I cannot say, you can understand and appreciate everything around you. Because the first time that I lost my sight, I felt like uh, uh, briefless, you know. But then, when I started thinking, I said, oh, all right, so I cannot breathe with my eyes, I breathe with my nose and my mouth, you know? I just said relaxing and concentrating my mind in other stuff. And then, when you put the attention to all, to all the other wonderful things that you have, um, you can still appreciate your life and the world around you, because even if my eyes are different now, even if the structure of my eyes uh, uh, is changed, the the wonderful world around me is not changed at all. It's always mm -hmm. the same. And then I think that uh, sometimes it's up to us uh, if we want to appreciate or not, because life goes on in any case. It does. It does. Would you mind us? Would you mind telling us? Would it be too personal to ask you how you lost your sight? Uh, well, it was um, a strange disease that I had. Uh, during my teenage, I was 13 years old when they discovered and um, they tried to do everything to, to stop it. And when I was 13, 14 years old more or less, I had moments where I, was, I, where I got blind and uh, then, um, thanks to um, a couple of doctors that treated my case, I was able to see again. Right. And then when I was 18, you know, since the disease was quite hard, and you know, at the beginning, uh, my um, yeah, the, the the situation went like that. But you know, now the thing that I like to do, and the thing that I want to say to everyone, mm -hmm. is that in in my case, uh, I, I like to be an inspiration for people because mm -hmm. probably, I don't know, mm, what happened to me can be also useful to everyone because I really want to say that uh, if you want, you can do everything. It's up to you. And I think that every one of us sometimes can have tough moments because it, it, it is part of the human beings, you know? Yes. And um, I think that, um, yeah, that, that, that's part. But if you really want, you, you can do your best and you can do what you want. And uh, I really suggest you want to keep going and uh, really follow your dreams. That this you, is why you're both. I, yes, because that's we exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> like, it's so. You're both inspirational. You are. Thank You're you. both inspirational that you you you've had challenges in your life. Cause I don't I don't like to look at them like um, 
uh, an illness or mm -hmm. uh, you know, some negative. It really is an experience you've had in your life, and and like you said, what are you gonna do with it? You gonna yes. you gonna complain, or are you going to move forward? And like Oprah would say, you know, on a new road. You know, yes. it's, a, it's a new Absolutely. road in your life. But we all have different types of new roads in our lives, right? We yeah. have you know challenges. The the important thing is to never give up because yeah. you always have hope because right around the corner, you know, things can completely change. You never know what's going to happen. And you just keep trying because you can either sit and roll over and to give up and say, Well that's it or you know, you can choose to rewrite your life and and really it's what you make of it. And so I would tell everyone to just really follow never give up follow what their dreams are and you know they can achieve success and maybe you know for, with stroke survivors maybe you know they the measure of success is different for every every person and so i really i just want everybody to know that you know they, we have first of all that stroke survivors can they're so capable of, of achieving great things yes and, yes i mean it's so important for people to realize. I, I, I always try to make help people try to ask people to be a little bit compassionate when they first mm -hmm. meet somebody because especially with somebody that's had a stroke, mm -hmm. you know, you're not really um, as quick minded when you first have a stroke. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, for, for me, I had very severe dizziness. You know, that was my that was my Achilles heel, and, and to some extent, it, it will always be that way. I mean, it's not as severe as it was before, but I, you know. You, so you still stuff. have some well, residuals. You, you know, with that, with, I'm always going to have the moments of dizziness. I mean, I, I right. accept that. You know, I, um, I can do everything. I mean, I wear heels, I run, I, I can do anything like that. But, you know, it's, I mean, I'll always yeah. have a little bit... I don't have a limp, but you know my left leg do, can locks up when I walk. But that's just something that's, that I have to accept. But deal. but if you look at where you have, you both have come mm -hmm. from, and then now where you are right oh, now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's so in, incredible the the uh, the uh, achievements that you both um, Thank have you. have really accomplished. Thank you. So so. Tomorrow, tomorrow. The MD Collaborative. Let me explain a little bit about that. Um, McKelly and I are members of this organization called the Indy Collaborative, and it's a a group of artists, independent music artists, and we're getting together. We do shows um, periodically through the year. We support each other. We have Facebook groups, and we have events, and um, it's run by Grant Malloy Smith and Eileen Sherman, and so now they have. Um, they they were performing in a showcase tomorrow wow. um, at the Bitter End in New York City, Greenwich. I believe it's in Greenwich Village. Okay. I'm not really quite sure. And um, it, it's going to be wonderful because we'll be surrounded with the other members who are just so amazingly talented and as well. And um, they are. It, it's a joy to to play with them. Now I will be speaking about my um, my audio book because that's my project is my spoken word. So you get oh you that's what you do. That's what you're well, doing. Well, that's what I'm doing because really I don't. Uh, where the others have new releases and music, I don't have that because obviously I've been rehabilitating my voice for three years. And so what I have is my audio book, and um, because it just came out last month, I thought it would be very appropriate. That's awesome. That's and something different that people are going to hear. Yes. If if everybody's singing and then somebody gets up and. Is speaking. speaking, I think it will be really a, a I'm, yes. moment. Yes, I'm speaking, um, you know, for a, a, my performance slot. And then I'm also, McKelly is going to be accompanying me on guitar. I'm going to be singing um, ah. uh, briefly, just a demonstration, because I really could not speak about a book that talks about getting my voice back and then not sing. Right, so. right. And what are what are what are one of the songs you're singing tomorrow? Um, we're probably going to do a, a rock song. Uh, you know, probably just just a cover song. Yeah, something. just something yeah. to get yeah. people rocking. Just somebody, on. yeah, just something that we're just going to yeah. do. Yeah. So um, they're also gonna play uh, another song of mine. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna introduce a song uh, of a new project that I'm doing now because I already released uh, my first project three years ago. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, which is this one. Yes. So this is this is this is the the old project. Uh, yeah, I have it. Which is called Leaves. Leaves. Yeah, it's it's a really, beautiful name. Yeah, it is my first project, and basically this one involved my my life. Uh, you know, during my 
teenage because I wrote my first song in when I was 15 years old wow. and the last one part of that CD when I was 19 more or less mm -hmm. so it's an you know um, now I consider a little bit an old project because you know my my skills now are completely different than you know than, than when I realized that but you know I, I, so I like that so could you when you wrote this I'm sorry I don't remember the timeline do, were you able to see when you wrote this the original songs the yeah, uh, your uh, first song yeah it was during my transition your transition during, yeah during uh, you know I, I was 15 and I was able to see then uh, when I was 17 I started having problems uh, more seriously where my doctor told me all right so the situation is like this so the risk that you can get blind is uh, you know is high now so it, it it was something uh, a bit tough because uh, when I, you are I can't imagine. Can you yeah. imagine? Like with, like can you imagine? I mean, with us, with us, yes. with the stroke, it we had no control over it. It just like came and mm -hmm. and we were we were just dealing with it. But to know that eventually something that that's can can, some, you're going to lose something that that you've been born with. It's got to be. It's got to yes. be. It's got to be. I mean, just, I mean, I want our, like, audience just to really think about that mm -hmm. moment. I mean, and a lot of people in their lives, um, I don't want to say that, I don't want to say that we use the wrong words because I know how powerful words are. But, you know, like, think about it before you complain about something that's really not Absolutely. important. Yes. Because mm -hmm. the value of life um, is so important. Value of life. Yeah, yes. but you know what? Many people sometimes ask me, "What do you think about? It? Did you prefer to, you know, uh, to be blind before, uh, since you were born, or uh, as you, as happened to you?" And I definitely say that I prefer like this, because if you talk to me about about I don't know a blue sky or uh, about mm. uh, how uh, skyscrapers can be, you know. I know that. You know because, what it looks uh, like. I, I know everything. I have everything on my mind. Oh my god. And so, um, when I meet people, for example, I imagine uh, how they are. Mm -hmm. um, for example, about hair or the eye colors, you know, and, and so on. So, um, I have my dimension. I have my images in my mind. Wow. And I really, you know what, I really thank God that I have the, this passion for the music, that I have the guitar in my life. Because um, I really, you know, I, I don't know what to do if I don't have the You guitar. channel it through your music. You yeah. channel your, your visions through your music. It's how you, it's how we all speak, but it's yeah. specifically how you speak because you can, you can, you can, you can think and you could process and you could imagine what it would be like. I mean, that's so empowering to talk about what it would be like, yeah. you know. And I also like, you know, mostly I like to play instrumental music because through my music, through my melodies, it's kind of I, I sometimes I look the guitar and the music in general as a um, secret diary, you know. Mm, yes. And sometimes uh, I I like to compose, putting my emotions and my thoughts, you know. And I do not I do not need to to write words because through melodies through the notes, it's like that I can express myself, it's like that I can I can express at the same time the feelings that I have inside of me. Right. And I, I create my, you know, I can create my pictures, my, you know, my journeys right. through my songs, but at the same time, when I listen to my songs, I have my ideas, I have, um, you know, my, my thoughts on that, but all the other people, can I cannot say they, they can live uh, their own experience from my songs wow. because I don't like too much to explain why I wrote that song uh, and so on you know because I, I love that people can have their own imagination that, but that's uh, that's what I was thinking when you were talking about writing melodies because you know I may have something going on in my life and that melody really soothes me and really it really touches my heart in a way that maybe it doesn't touch yours or mm -hmm. yours it's it's personal yeah you know so it's it's so wonderful I'm so happy to have both of you thank you what so I know you just did the uh, the the audio oh, yes and this the is audio. for you oh thank you yes so I mean 
What's on the agenda? Oh, thank thank you. You. Aside what? from tomorrow night, what what's like the plan, the moving forward? Like, what are you going to both do together sure. to, you know, sh and you know, the platform, you guys, I want to thank you both for using mm -hmm. the platform that God has gifted to you mm -hmm. because we, sometimes it's not a gift that we want, but we have to take it and I'm really happy that you guys are using it in such a positive manner and and the platform of singing and music is really that's why I named my um, my foundation Renee Marie's language of love because to me music is a language of love yes yeah. and so what are you guys planning on doing well I'm, I'm glad you asked that actually I've just been accepted to Berkeley College of Music as well oh, so you did you yeah. have yes I was now, didn't work. You, now you'd be back a few years ago you I did the summer program okay. okay and so now I've been accepted to the college where Michele is yeah. a student, so I'm planning to start in May of 2018, wow. and so we'll be attending school together, and hopefully we'll be doing some projects together. Yeah. That is, that, yeah. that's really... It's great. Come full circle. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's what I was thinking, like, it's so mm -hmm. incredible that, you know, uh, many years ago you had a stroke, and it, it, it would have prevented somebody else from achieving yes. what they wanted, but you went right back, and you... You know, absolutely. I'm very, very busy. I'm busier now than I was before I had the stroke. I'm actually singing the national anthem at the American Heart Walk for the American Heart Association in September 9th and in Boston. And um, I, yeah, I've got a lot of things happening. I've got a lot of press. I've been. I was just on the radio in in Italy. Um, I know. But tell us about that. Sure. Now we have um, a friend here that's it came in from Italy. Maybe at the end he'll come up and uh, he'll say a few words, be on okay. the show if you like. You both can come on. Well, up actually, in a the, other, bit. the other, the um, other, the other ironic <laughs> thing is that um, I'm Sicilian American and ah. uh, Michele is from Sicily yeah, from as well. Sicilian. Yes, that is like so we connect on that as well. That's yes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about the really. I mean, because your friend came from Italy and and. You know, just tell us the whole Italian connection and sure. and you know how your radio program went in Italy. I saw yeah, that on radio, Facebook. Yes, um, actually, I connected. I, I connected with that radio Zenith Messina through New York City, um, not through Italy itself. I um, my the host uh, Daniela, she's wonderful. I appeared. Um, I was on on air on her show. Interviewed uh, a few days back. And because she's actually featuring um, artists from the Indie Collaborative, she's been doing it all summer. Ah. She's been featuring them for interviews and playing their music on her show. Wow. And so I had an interview and she played a couple of songs uh, that I had. One, it, I did a CD in Italian. Uh, a few years back, 2011. So you could speak fluent Italian? No, actually, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can speak fluent Spanish, not Italian. My mm -hmm. Italian family wanted to be able to speak behind our backs, mm -hmm. so they never taught us how to speak Italian. Yes. But my Spanish grandmother raised us, so okay. she had to, because my mom is an opera singer, and mm -hmm. she traveled around the world, so she wasn't, you know, here all the time. So my, gran my grandmother would speak in Spanish, so I, I just recorded a song a few years ago in Spanish. Wow. And, um, Wonderful. And, but what I was going to say was my background singer, Karen, who is the best background singer, she, we can sing, but with her in the backdrop, it's like, I go, that's, that sounds so good. I'm like, I can't believe how, like, the, yes. the harmonies just enhance mm -hmm. the, the music. It's just beautiful. But she, she didn't speak any, any Spanish, and she wow. looked at, the, the 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 lyrics and she read mm -hmm. she read them and she sang them. That's amazing. Yes. I'm like, how could you do that? So can you read well, Italian? No, I can read Italian. Absolutely, yes. And but as far as speaking it, I do speak a little Italian, <laughs> but I can I, I choose not to speak it because um, I, it's Michele. I don't know what do you think. It's it's well, how would you describe my Italian? <laughs> I mean, it, it's good for introduction. Yes, yeah. introduction. Yeah, it's good. Can you can you understand it? Um, if uh, someone speaks slowly, I can. Yes, they got to speak slowly. Yes. So I did the interview in English, and Daniela translated into Italian for her listeners in oh, uh, Messina. Oh, that's so good. So it was live playing um, in Messina, and then also streaming through the United States in New York City as wow. well. Wow, that's so. it's so incredible how the connections and the dots get 
played, mm -hmm. you know. So she did this Italian um, interview. The, the now is she? She's based in New York. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But she broadcast into Italy. Yes. That blows me away. Yes, it's, it was blows wonderful. me away. Mm -hmm. That's almost like this Facebook that we could be sitting mm -hmm. here touching the entire world. You know, speaking to people. It's just yes. it just cracks me up. Mm -hmm. Cracks me up. So um, so you're you're. What's the next step for you? Oh, the next step is uh, I actually really just go out and. My, I've done a lot of book promotion. I've done book signings at Barnes and Noble. I've had, um, I've had opportunities. I've, I've appeared at libraries. I've, I've spoken at libraries, and I've done meet and greets. I performances. Um, so I've, I have uh, played at uh, the Italian festival in our, in our, um, in my town and hometown. I've done a, a lot of different uh, various events, and I hope to continue uh, doing so. Yeah, I'm just in writing. Um, some more as soon as I I just finish with this promotion, my next project will be another a, book, a, another a CD of original music. So that's my goal. So you're gonna you're gonna sing it. You're gonna yes yes mm -hmm, because my voice is returned and I uh, performing again. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you sing me? You sing me go right? You sing. Um, you sing you or do you just do? Yeah, uh, ba basically I play the guitar and, and do instrumental music. For example, in my first project, I recorded a song with a friend of mine. It's a bossa nova song because I love Brazilian music too. Mm. And yeah, she sang for me. I mean, I wrote the music and she, she wrote the lyrics. And actually, I have a second project that I'm doing. And I recorded my own voice in a song that I wrote. It's a, a rock song. But uh, you know, mostly I prefer to play the guitar when I'm in public. <laughs> you don't like you don't want to sing. Um, you know, no, I prefer to play. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's funny. Yeah. That's that's good. That's yeah. good. So tomorrow night, how many how many artists do they have tomorrow night? Do you know? I believe there's about fifty. Yeah, one fifty. And how many? How long do you get? Because I know there's a there's a platform. Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> There's a platform. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I'll talk to you in one second. But there's a platform that you only get a few minutes so that you yes, can showcase. You, you could showcase your your, mm -hmm. your stuff. Okay. So, are you going to the? Because I know I'm. We're going to the Grammys this year yes. because it's in New York City. Yes, it's wonderful. Yay! This is the first time that I uh, will be attending in New York because I living in Boston. It's um. I, it's great. I mean, we go to LA every year. Did you? So you've been. So tell us I've a little bit. Tell us a little bit about because you said to me that you were on the um, on the uh, the red carpet. Yes. In your uh -huh. in, in your wheelchair. I, I, yes, I did. I, I was in the wheelchair. However, I did not. I, I chose to walk it and just had the wheelchair there in case. And um, but I was on the red carpet a total of I believe two. Two or three times, I, yeah, wow. I was on the red carpet. Yes, actually three times. Uh, once before the stroke, and then twice um, after the stroke. I, I had the privilege of getting on. I've, I've never been nominated or nothing like that. But I'm just a voting member. That's, that's what I am. But that's and, so, um, I mean, the Grammys or the Record Academy is just as wonderful It's, it's a wonderful organization. And um, I, I really enjoy attending the, the Grammys. And... Um, they um they're, they're just they're great people they allowed me to actually walk on the red carpet and i brought how did you because i am gonna plan on going this year because yes. it's in new york it's mm -hmm. like 20 minutes from my house yes. probably it'll probably take me three hours to get there because mm -hmm. of all the uh the security that'll be there and all the traffic mm -hmm. and everything but um so i plan on going so it, it, because i'm a member does that give me the i don't i know you don't know specifically but mm -hmm. Um, does how do I get on the how do I get to walk the red carpet? Um, you, uh, I, it's I, I don't know actually. They just allowed me to go on, and I <laughs> no, just, I'm just curious because it will be my first time. Yeah, they, they, they will probably have a really nice. I they will have a very nice setup where people can uh, walk on um, certain areas. It'll it'll, it'll be wonderful. Right. I it'll know. Wonderful. Oh, so we're going together. Um, well, I'm I'm going with um. Uh, by, yes, my, my husband and um, uh, and McKelly is probably might be going as well. We are, you know. So I'll uh, see you there. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awesome. I can't believe that you know it's it's like right around the corner from me because mm -hmm. uh, 
I've always, I've been a member since 2007, I think. I think that's the date. How long have you been a member for? Uh, 2012. 2012. Mm -hmm. And you're you're just a, a, a student, uh, student member. member. Yeah. A student member, yes. From, from the ACU. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. So when do, when does, um, does, so you're in this, the program, so when does school start for both of you? Well, um, your school starts next yeah, week. Yeah, next week, I think it's September 4th. I'm going to start the first day and then, of school. Yeah. So what is it like to go to, to Berkeley school? Like, what's your day filled with? I mean, because I would think it would have to do all with music, but there's a lot of music history that you'd have to learn as well. Uh, yeah, well, Berkeley, I think it's, um, in, in my in personal experience, I can say that it is a wonderful place, but at the same time, it's a bit stressful because you have uh, thousands of things to do, you know? You study music, uh, but you study theory, uh, doing, for example, lots of, um, I'm gonna say, um, ear training or harmony you study, or for example, um, you study also arranging, and um, then uh, the practice uh, with your uh, instrument, and you can also, you know, have to connect clearly with people where you can play in ensembles, wow. mm -hmm. you know, and basically when you study at Berkeley, um, it's something you you are involved in lots of projects every time wow. you know and yeah i'm starting my second semester but in my first semester i really was very full of things to do every day you know? so it's it's almost a 24 7 thing because i mean you probably take the classes aren't specifically during the day there's summer at night am i correct yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, during the first semester, you, you, you um, the classes that you do are the um, the basics for everyone. Like uh, ear training and harmony are um, classes that everyone uh, has to follow at the beginning. Then you can also choose the classes you want to follow, and um, you have also um, things to do at night because, for example, for all the AMP students the studio sessions or the yeah you, you can work on the studios during the night and so it's um, you, you have uh, something to do anytime wow yeah. wow so when do you start uh, next May oh you you do take in your like the spring session the, spring? Uh, the summer session oh the sure. summer yes. session I thought mm -hmm. that I'm sorry I thought that's what you had taken prior oh this is a different uh, that I had taken um, Umbria Jazz Clinics is a summer program yeah. With but this would be a, a, a summer semester at the Boston School, ah, okay. like a, a full credit semester. Okay. Yeah, I had um, my mom studied at Juilliard. Oh, so great. Oh, great. I had gone. She brought me to Juilliard just recently, and it was such an honor to walk around those. Mm -hmm. Though just to be in the presence of mm -hmm. the oh, students great. there, they're amazing. They, yeah. they are. But Berkeley is. Oh, Berkeley is equal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. But but you know what I was going to say was I love the little studio rooms mm -hmm. like yeah. you know they, they, they had four pianos in there and they were all playing and you know and then they had the, the violins in one place and they had the flutes mm -hmm. in another and they had vocalists and it was really really uh, an honor to, to, to walk those paths so I'd love to take a love to visit Berkeley where is it exactly in New York City no it's in Boston in Boston yes. okay mm -hmm. so where is it exactly in Boston Boston is it, is it's, it, it's right in the center, in the center, of, Boston. center of Boston yes. okay Do you know okay um, no I was in Boston you're gonna laugh I was in Boston for um, a few hours oh. a gentleman my father used to own a deli mm -hmm. and there was a gentleman that uh, liked to gamble and at that particular time many many years ago the, the lottery was in Boston. So he bought a plane ticket for my husband and I, at my, my former husband at that time, to fly to Boston to buy tickets, to have dinner, and to come back. Oh, wow. So that's, I visited Boston in, uh, for, for like three hours. <laughs> Wonderful. So, um, you know, tell us, I know, let's go back to your book because that yes. really is, you know, this is really what brought us together all here today, mm -hmm. and DeMont was so wonderful in, in reconnecting us. Um, tell us, like, tell us, like, one of the chapters, like, what, are, what, like, this chapter, chapter 15. Sure. Like, you know, give us some, give us some information about, like, what the book details and what it explains. Okay, the book is really, the, it's my memoir, it's a story of my stroke and recovery through the first year. 
And so I um, detail what my life was like prior to the stroke, how I was, you know, a musician, a, a, a vocalist. I had my CDs. I was also, you know, I was a violinist for a long time, and I danced and all of that. And right. so I discussed that, and I sang with the Al Vega Trio um, oh, in wow. Boston, the jazz trio. And so I, I discussed that, then the experience of having the stroke, and then being in the hospital, and coming in this particular chapter you're opening to was when I just got out of the hospital and the first time that I actually came, um, drove, well, was driven home uh, on my street. And wow. so I, you know, I couldn't believe it because I had not seen my street in a month or any street. I know. You were, you were in a hospital and yes. it's almost a, a whole different I mean, world. Two months almost. Yeah. Yes. I remember when my father was in ICU. And it really, I, I actually wrote a, cha a chapter about it. It was like a whole different world to be in, in a hospital yes. setting. And I will say that my husband, Mark, um, he was just amazing, wonderful. Um, what he had done for me was he, he, he took such incredible care of me, and he stayed in the hospital every single night. Wow. He stayed there. And so he drove me home. He was my chauffeur or my my caretaker oh. because I lost my license for a year. Oh my god. So um in this chapter that you're um you were opening to it was um describes on how it felt to actually come back home for the first time. Now after a stroke, you know, as you know, you are uh, overstimulated. You, it's just the cars going by are so fast and it's just you know, and crazy. you know, you know what I have found and this is like it's almost like, you know, there's no uh, boundaries, there's no guidelines. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you're thinking so fast and you're all over the place. You know, I, yes. I found I was all over the place, mm -hmm. you know. And actually, I had to, um, through life, I had to meet up with a gentleman that helped me put my feet back on the ground. Yes. And, you know, if I wanted to do my my work, my foundation work mm -hmm. and my stroke work for for the general public to understand I, was, I was like all over this. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do this. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And, but nobody ever was like, okay, what is she talking about? Mm -hmm. So I really needed. So I understand. Yes, and then when I when I came back on my street, um, this I saw this big sign. This is was the and my friend Kim, who's actually in the audience today. Um, she came with me Kim, to New York. Kim can come up in a little bit. So that would be wonderful. Wait, so that we could come See, on up, Kim. And she, um, her, Kim and her two daughters are wonderful. They made a beautiful just, just sign for me. Just do me a favor. Be careful of the, okay. um, yeah. Okay. Can you can you see her in yes. there? Yes. They yeah. made a beautiful sign. And, um, I, yeah, it, it just it said, well, it, just, it was welcome, welcome home. You home. Welcome me mm -hmm. home. And they had uh, come to my home the night before, or was it or the day before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they taped it to the, it was huge. They oh. taped it to the outside of my house mm -hmm. in front of my, you know, wow. my, below my living room window. And that's the very first thing I saw when I was, you know, driving, I was being driven down my street and I see that. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, somebody, it's like somebody did something to the house. And then as I got closer that I realized what it was. So, I mean, that was just incredible. Oh. And Kim had seen me. Kim was with me the night before my stroke, mm -hmm. and we were just and hanging out in my house, and, and nothing was wrong. And yeah, was she? Was she? You know what, Kim? Come around this way because I think there's more room on this side. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, she. Can you um, put this down there? Uh, my, and then she I, said she had have you come up. a little mild headache. Wait, and before you it. talk, just get on, get on the set. Okay. <laughs> I'll stand. Oh, thank you. you could sit. Thank you. I like um, to wing. <laughs> I'm good at winging it too. Yes. We um we I just came over just to mm -hmm. hang out a little bit. I don't remember what if there yeah, was a reason. Not that we went in the pool. Yeah, yeah maybe that was the reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and you said I have like a little bit of a weird headache. Well, yes. I don't know, for the last couple days. And then that, yeah, my neck. Well, the neck was excruciating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because yeah. you had done this a few days ago. Well, I took the neck was excruciating, and then that evening, the night before. Maybe it had just started to give me a, a little bit of a headache, nothing really yeah. to speak of. But I was taking, um, I was taking Advil or Tylenol just to to mm. to make that pain go away, or it was so unbearable. And so, mm. Um, mm. so Kim was with me, and then after the stroke, Kim was one of the first people that had seen me in the hospital, um, and just couldn't believe it. You know, mm. I had an eye patch on; I could only see because I was seeing double. And I had to put an eye patch on to be able to see, and it was just, mm -hmm. it was like a totally different person. Your left side was paralyzed. Yeah, in one we, day. We came to Mass General to yes. see you, mm -hmm. and I think you, it was the third day after Yes, it might have been the third day. Um, mm -hmm. and, and in fact, Mark said to us, I don't know 
what you're going to think when you walk in. Yes. And mm -hmm. you know, and I, I and I didn't know what I would see, wow. but, you know. But she was she was her laying in a bed and you know and had a, her patch on and mm -hmm. glasses on. Mm -hmm. Um and but you actually did move your right leg. You said, "Look, I can mm -hmm. I can move my leg." And she She had the spirit. Um, she had she the did. spirit back even when, that, back I, back as, yes. as soon yeah. as she was done. Yeah. But I did say something I will never forget. I said something to Kim. I said, you know, I really don't care if my entire body is paralyzed I, as long mm -hmm. as I can still sink. Yep. You know, that's all I care about, yeah. as long as I can still sink. I and then I couldn't, um, I don't think I started to, I didn't sing when you were there. That I no. sang with them. my other friend, Michelle, came to see me, who she's a singer. Um, so I sang for her, and then it was just, it was terrible. I was screaming. I had a, it was, I, I couldn't, I was, I was like a You sang a, Frank animal. Sinatra when you were at Spalding Rehab. You said, I'm going to sing for you, and you tell me how horrible it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't even remember, I, 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 I don't even remember this. You sang Fly Me to the Moon, I remember. I did? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's so yes. funny. Yeah, Fly Me to the Moon. So from the very beginning, she was like, I'm going to sing again. That's it. Yes. Wow. I'm going to sing again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well uh, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible that you're all here because music is really, a key. Root music is like a key for recovery. Yes, you it know, is. it really. It, it, it now your brain, mm -hmm. yours was the left side. I don't think the left. No, My yours right was side. the right side. Mine was the left side. Yes. Oh. And mine, I don't know what's the, what side of the brain is the music. I think I think it's no. I think it's the other side. I think yeah. it's I think it is the left side. I think it is. No, I think it's the right side. I think it's the mm -hmm. right side. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because, because I couldn't, I could not sing a melody because I, I couldn't match. I, I never really went off key before this happened. Yeah. And then after this happened, I could I had nothing, no pitch at all. I just, I couldn't even I, sing the melody. I, at la, I remember trying to sing it last and I would say, at last, my love. That's but you knew voice that was the most frustrating the, thing. Is yes, you knew. I you knew. Like, oh, hear it. I knew hear exactly it. Hear it. what the melody was in my brain, but I could not make it my voice. Come on up. Oh. He said that. Come on. <laughs> We're going to, if you can meet Bush Miguel in a little bit. Yeah. Just be careful. Be careful of this because if you yeah, step on that, you're going to. Yeah, move, move him in. I just want to make sure we all get in. Because yeah. I want to, you know, you all came a really, really, really. Go there. Just be careful of the. Uh, feel it. Yes. Okay. You there it is. Okay. All right. <laughs> I really wanted to get everybody in. Just okay. squ squat down so they can Child. see you because okay. you're too tall. <laughs> all right. I, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I really wanted to bring, get everybody in because mm -hmm. you know Damon had hooked up um, and mm -hmm. you know reintroduced myself and Valerie. And look at all the friends and all look at all the the the, the supporters that Valerie has that really came from New York on a Sunday evening where they could be, you know, visiting New York and they really wanted to make a statement that how important stroke recovery is and how important Valerie's mission is and and they really love Valerie and really wanted to support her so you know I really want to give all of you thank you for for coming today and what I forgot what's your name uh, Francesco and Francesco came from Italy yeah he flew in from Italy <laughs> and not Italy? only well, it is uh, yes it, uh, his um uh, you grew up with Michele yeah, yes. basically, so that, we were yes. in the same high school. So you were in the so, same high school, yes. so you yeah. came into Italy, and you're in Hawthorne, New Jersey, because you <laughs> flew into... So how long are you in, in town for? Um, a bit. One time for sake, we want to tell you what. Uh, two days. Yeah. Two days? Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> well, yeah, here. So here then, in New York? In yes, New York? Yes. Uh, today? Yeah, yeah, we, we arrived this morning. Oh, but in America... Uh, on the 25th. Yes. On the so he's going to Berkeley as well? No, he's a friend of mine. He okay. came with me for um, a couple of days. He's going to, you know, he, he, basically he's helping me now uh, mm -hmm. a little bit because I had a couple of things to do. And um, so I just asked a friend if uh, could come could come with me, you know, for uh, a couple of days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was free and basically now he's helping me. But at the same time we are on vacation. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's great. Well, you're all an inspiration. And Valerie, yeah. I want you to give your information about your website, and I want to give your information where they could purchase your book and sure. your your uh, CD. Your your. Uh, you know, your audio book. Um, yes. yes. Audio sure. book. Well, the website is ValerieGilio.com, and you could purchase my 
uh, print and ebook on Amazon.com, on BarnesandNoble.com, uh, at I Am Books Boston. Um, it's an Italian American bookstore. Um, and iTunes, uh, iBooks rather. Um, and then my audiobook is available on Audible, uh, which is part of Amazon.com. Uh, it's available on CD Baby and available through my website as well. Yeah. Um. And There's tell us where, yes. yes, tell us tell yeah. us how they can get in touch with you and your information and your book here. I'm going to give you your oh. CD so you can hold it what? up. Is, is this the front? Mm -hmm. That's the front. All right. Just place it that way. That's perfect because that's the camera mm -hmm. way. All right. So basically, this is my first project, as I said before. And I do not have it online, but you can contact me on my Facebook page, which is Michele Mike Romeo. Yes, Michele is uh, written like Michelle, but with one L at the end. Then Mike and Romeo, like Romeo and Juliet. Uh, well, mm -hmm. it's, it's, He's it's, Italian, it's, what can I yeah, tell you? <laughs> the romantic <laughs> comes out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> easy to remember. Uh, you can look it up my Facebook page. You can contact me directly, and uh, I can tell you more uh, how to purchase my CD. And that's it, yeah. Very nice to, to talk to you tonight. Yes, thank you very, very much for it's, having me. It's, it's an it's, honor to be on your um, on your show. Really, um, thank you. It's th I'm so I, you know, glad we connected. Yes, and you know what? That's why I love to have this show because I I love having the platform mm -hmm. with with the the that we can get out to people stories and you know we came for a stroke story but we got an added bonus today yes. with your story your inspiration you're both inspirations to, to everyone you. you know with the drive and really the passion to make a difference in people's lives is is really an incredible incredible thing um, does anyone know the song I believe in music uh, I think so. By um, God, I can't think it was no. By Mac Davis. Do you know that? Y yeah, I, th I think so. Okay, so I'm gonna sing it a cappella, and you can all join in and sing with me if everybody, because you well, should I know, know it. I don't know it at all, and uh, yeah, but um, hum. I, I, hum. 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 Uh, okay. Because <laughs> I always like to end music, especially today on a day where we have music, and get over here so we can see your face. <laughs> Okay. See? And then we have we have two minutes, so I'm just gonna sing for like a few minutes because then we blow kisses at the end. All right. Okay, we always blow kisses. Okay, so let's just sing one verse. Well I can just sit around making music all day long. As long as I'm making my music, I can't do nobody wrong. And who knows, maybe someday I'll come up with a song that makes people want to stop the fussing and fighting just long enough to sing along. Let's go. I believe in music and I, I believe in love. One more. I I believe in music, Lord knows that I, I believe in love. Let's blow our kisses, ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye everyone, thank you so much, thank you to Valerie and Miguel and everybody, and thank you so much. Thank you. And First of all. Yes. All right. Oh, Bye. he's got his pencil. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Woo.